Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Tuesday, September 24th at midnight, Mountain Time. The snow totals are in, and they're deep. They're deeper than expected, and we're only looking through October 1st. Let's actually bring it back there to October 1st. And, and you can see the amount of snow coming in here through British Columbia, Alberta, and into Montana. Now, these models are pretty solid, especially when you just go three or four days out here. Here's through the 29th, 28th. So we're looking at pretty solid totals. And then if we bring it forward, British Columbia is picking up four feet as well. So we have four feet in Alberta and Wyoming in the high country, as well as four feet in multiple areas in British Columbia. Not only that, the entire state of Wyoming is going to be covered in snow in just the next 10 days. Many tropical storms on the forefront. We've got Jerry, Karen, Lorenzo, and number one, none of them are a threat to you. Jerry may rafe Bermuda. But just as a tropical storm in a rain pattern, nothing like Humberto. Keep calm. It's boom time. Facts ahead. Carl Dioff predicted as marine heat wave engulfs Hawaii. Oh my God, that sounds terrible. The edge of an ancient lava flow where jagged black rocks meet the Pacific and <laughs> ocean water gets heated by volcanic activity to hundreds of degrees. They're worried about 80 degree ocean temperatures. Well, this is nothing more than an opportunity for Channel 12 to capitalize on the anthropogenic global warming nonsense climate change BS that is filling the media. It started uh, eight years ago in Australia with coral bleaching and one of their top scientists said poo-poo to the whole idea. Yeah, bleaching was happening on the periphery and at the edges where estuaries were dumping in chemical inputs from agriculture, but it had nothing to do with you and global warming and CO2 input from your outgassing carbon. It had everything to do with major multinational corporations polluting the waterways with NPK from their stupid chemical farming practices. Now, I might be going over the top here, but not only is it not the warmest time in recent history, but 3,000 years ago, 4,000 years ago, 5,000 years ago, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, and so on, were all warmer than today. In fact, from 9,000 to about 4,000, there was no ice at all up in the Arctic, and no one was worried. But we're worried now that the ice is thinning, so to speak. When it's not, it's actually thickening. But we're going to get to that in a minute. Let's look at the Holocene temperature variations for some of you that can maybe realize this. Here's the baseline at zero. And we can see at 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, and 8,000 years ago, I'm sure the Pacific was much warmer than it is today. And the coral is still there, by the way. Ocean tropical storm Lorenzo to intensify into a hurricane into the Atlantic. We'll see. Lorenzo is likely to become a hurricane, but likely to become a hurricane for no one but the ocean. Tropical storm Karen heads to Puerto Rico and could impact the U.S. mainland next week, as fear mongers predict, but it's not going to hit the mainland <laughs> because I have the data. There's your information for TDK. Tropical Depression Karen become a tropical storm and passed across Puerto Rico with some wind and rain, nothing in particular, and headed out uh, towards Bermuda. It could turn this way, and we could be watching this. So not until Friday do we care about what Karen does, because what Karen does is what depression is. Nothing. Karen's going to do nothing to nobody. Well, a little rain. Plants need it. Let's talk about Tropical Storm Jerry which will stay Tropical Storm Jerry as it passes closely through the northern reaches of Bermuda that just got raped by Humberto. But this will be nothing like that. This will be a dance in the park. Put on your bikini, smoke a fatty, and stroll around the beaches. Well, this little tropical storm tickles your arse. That's what I would do. I would like be skipping and, and smoking and 
and making like little mud huts and maybe some structures with palm fronds. It'd be awesome. Trust me. Tropical Storm Lorenzo to become Hurricane Lorenzo. Turn north way before anything and go right up into the middle of the Atlantic and hopefully hook around and hit, yeah, the UK. With a blizzard! 2019-2020 Farmer's Almanac winter forecast. Let's get to it. It's deep and it's dirty and it's snowy. It's blue for the entire country of North America. It says it's going to be nice in Florida, but I predict snow moving further south than has ever been seen in over... 80 years. I said it. Mark my words. If I'm wrong, please kick my ass and take the names. But you can't do that until next spring. I'm going to predict snow falling further south than, let's say, Orlando. Maybe in a tippy touch towards Miami. But mostly in the Okeechobe. So I'm looking for snow in the Okeechobe this winter. I'm looking for uh, record snow in all of the southern states, Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, Georgia. Yeah, and Texas is going to be the nexus of the Schmexus. It's going to be northern Texas and west Texas, but I may digress. Now, this is the old Farmer's Almanac weather map for this year. It's going to be deep powder, low temps, more snow all the way down to Tucson. Snow all the way down to L.A. again. Snow all the way down towards Mexico and Texas, which will be the schmexus of the nexus. Snow everywhere. Snow, 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 and wet and wild and mild with soakers. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Brisk and wet. I like that term. Frosty, wet, and white. Frozen and snowy, frigid and snowy, snowy and snowy and snowy and snowy and snowy and snowy and snowy, 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 snowy. Boom! And that's tonight's first boom. The whole continent is fluxed. Heads up. There's your current snowpack. As summer just ends a day ago, snowpack begins. It's going to be a white one, as I predicted two years ago, according to Karen Calgary. September will end with a strong snowy storm. Summary, you're fluxed. That what has already happened in the U.S. in the summer. Let's check out Sugar Bowl, California, September 16th. Look at that guy. He's already got a snowboard on. Big Sky, Montana, September 21st. Boom! Holy! That is big. And that is Sky. Grand Tarhe, Wyoming. Another boom. I can't even unboom that. Holy! In 8 to 12. You can see people already making fresh tracks and shit. Those pricks. Jackson Hole. Stick it in your pie hole and smoke it. September 21st. Another boom. Holy macaroni. Alta. 21st. Another boom. Holy macaroni. Keep calm. It is boom time. Where are we headed? Oh. Here's a forecast for the 23rd through the 25th. The next 36 hours of power is going to bring heavy snow up into British Columbia. And look at this. The Bay of Fundy about to get tippy touched by a... <whistles> it's about to shut off the Northwest Passage for the rest of your life. Mark my words. Even though this 4 to 8 forecast, you might find skeptical of... But it's going to be really cold up here, especially in Alberta. Forecast temperature versus average. This is the, you know, the temperature anomaly map. 26 through the 30th, which is just the next seven days. And you're looking at uh, southern Alberta is going to be in a herda. And they need to rush and harvest those crops. Now, at the same time, the snow prediction is epic. The five-day snow forecast below is quite impressive, record-breaking, with 6 to 24 inches predicted in Canada, mostly in Alberta, as well as the U.S., from California to Montana, and for most areas in between. <laughs> you want to extend it? Boom! Same spot, taking names. This is after the mainstream just weeks ago said the Pacific Northwest would be dry and never receive snow ever again. Every time they say something, the exact opposite happens. Opposite much? Major Canadian city headed for a 20-degree drop and snow this week. 
after the global warming alarmists were all over the shite. Diamond's predictions came true. Like a who from the Grinch that stole Christmas. Parts of Alberta will hardly have time to welcome far before winter comes to call this week. Man, we, we can't watch that. While the first few days of the new season will be pleasant, a surge of Arctic air will send temperatures tumbling into the latter half of the week. And that puts snow. Well, yes. some serious snow late September on chill table. on the way to much of Western Canada. And the source region is highest latitudes on the planet, the North Pole. A lot of that starts to seep south. See those purples? That's up in the Northern Territories. None of it. And then that sags further south. It's like the Arctic door was left open, really. British Columbia, Alberta seems to get the coldest temperatures. That's what guidance is suggesting now. And we'll play out this projection. We're not going to get into too many details about snowfall. Early season snowfalls are notorious to forecast. But there you go, Thursday, that rain snow line wants to shift east out of the foothills, potentially through Thursday afternoon. Calgary, your freezing level plummets Friday and Saturday at this point. Uncertainty how far that snow will spill into parts of southern Alberta and Saskatchewan. Big question mark here. Extremely low confidence. You'll want to check back in on the forecast later this week. Now, we do have good confidence, great confidence, that temperatures in the highest elevations of the Rocky Mountains bottom out below minus 10. Sharp contrast this upcoming weekend where temperatures will flirt with 30 degrees in extreme southwestern Ontario. That's a 40 degree difference across Canada. Holy macaroni. Time to smoke that bowly. Can you believe that? Can you believe exactly what we predicted two years ago is exactly coming true? Meridional flow, extreme hot and cold, uh, crop destruction. And this winter specifically, two years ago, I predicted to be the worst winter in recorded history in modern time. And it's just beginning. It's just the first day of fall. Happy fall, everybody. And the empire is about to fall. Isn't that amazing? It's just like the coming times. I'm like rubbing my hands. It's just like a few years away from the end of all the nonsense. Do you see the smile on my face? It's great because I'm I'm preparing. I We just had three freezes in summer which is, was a bummer, but I, I actually harvested like 150 pounds of hardened winter squash, which would feed 10 of us all winter, including with the greens and other grains that we grow. I mean, and not to mention that our greenhouse never falls below 32 degrees, even at minus 30. So we're, we, there's food in there all year, plus the food we save. I've got 20 pounds of garlic and 50 pounds of onions I haven't harvested and hundreds of pounds of potatoes that I haven't harvested. So literally I could feed an army and that we're just stepping up. So next year it could be thousands of pounds and, and think of the possibility. Once you start lowing, learning how to be successful growing, the, the sky is the limit and we're going to be needing it. And I think this winter will be a wake up call for many watch below the shots of cold air. Take aim on Alberta. And we show, show you the models. So they have low confidence that the southern regions are going to receive that much snow. But Diamond has high confidence because he predicted the snow almost 14 days ago. And uh, the models are coming true. And, and it's not based on my blind faith on models. I don't just look at a model and say, oh, that's what's going to happen. I look at the model, see what's developing, and then I just delve into the historical documentation. And I, if I notice the same exact things happening during solar minima, during a similar cosmological time, well, it's game on. Because since I've been doing that five years ago, 100% of all the weather events that ever occurred in the past that line up at the same cosmogenic events and uh, other events at the same time, at the same date, in the same portion of the solar cycle, the same events happen. And, and that's not by chance. It's, it's not by accident. This is what forecasters do. It's called due diligence. I do my due diligence. I look at all the data sets that are currently available to the modern public. I look at data sets that most people couldn't even find. And then I cross-check it with 
historical documentation, and media resources. And if they all line up, guess what, kids? Yeah. It's, it's not soothsaying. It's boom time. It's knowledge. Alberta farmers race to harvest crops before the killing frosts that we predicted over a week ago, and they were just told about yesterday. Many people in Canada have been emailing me pissed off because I told everyone in Canada a week ago what was going to come. Heavy snows in Alberta and BC are going to move in the first week of October, maybe the last week of September, and, and exactly what I predicted has happened. And now they're just getting the word from the official sources. So they're like, oh my God, we got to rush to harvest these crops. When they could have been doing it seven days ago. With the forecast calling for rain and snow at the end of the week, farmers in southern Alberta are working long hours to finish harvesting before the snow flies. Because diamond does not lies. <laughs> that didn't even rhyme. Check out the forecast. It's not. It's a porch mass. Oh my God. It's a lore cast i don't even know what that is this is something that i would show you in february or january but it is the end of september unfortunately and if we look at the national model even east canada which is going to be baking look eastern canada is going to be baking while this western snow falls in 30 c heat which will be quelched as snows fall in new england by the first end of first week of October. Eastern Canada should be picking up some snows, heavy snows in the middle of the craton here. And these regions are going to change by 30 degrees C in just the next seven to 10 days. Greenland's disappearing ice sheet worries scientists. Breaking news coming out in over 14 sources over the last five days. Greenland's disappearing ice is worrying scientists. And one degree is everything, according to the IPCC, which bases all of its scaremongering on climate modeling, none of it on facts. This is p pure mathematical charlatanism, which is being perpetrated by the mainstream because it's owned by the six multinational corporations that also shove genetically modified organisms down your throat and the pharmaceutical industry up your vein. So if you don't see the connection between the mainstream media, big ag, and the pharmaceutical organizations, and your own government, then you haven't been watching our channel objectively, and your ears are clogged with some shit, and you probably need a big Q-tip. Or potentially that popping sound is your head just coming out of your ass. In our I, Earth series, we're showing original reporting focusing on the heart of our planet. Greenland's melting ice sheet is contributing to a rise in sea levels. False! They could threaten millions of low-lying areas. False! Rich people are buying up coastal homes. A situation that became more urgent this summer when 11 billion tons of ice melted in one day. Oh my God, man. That's like, did I just hear that? Is that an actual fact? Yeah, it's a fact. It's a fact, and I'm going to share you the fact right up your crack. <clears throat> so let's get to the fact. This is the 11 billion gigatons that melted last year, right here, one day. And this is the 6 billion gigatons that was gained today, which cut that in half in one day. That one, that melt day, Today, it cut in half because that's a record gain on Greenland today. Record 6 billion gigatons. That's actually 6 gigatons. It's not billion, but I like to say billion. You know why? Because billion is what Isaac Asimov used to discredit my buddy. Yeah. Velikovsky. Billions and billions of bullshits. Billions and billions. So here we have six gigatons of ice building in one single day above the multi-decadal average would be record territory. And yet they're reporting today about the Greenland ice melt. Now, one of our subscribers who is a scientist, by the way, many top scientists converse with me via email. 
but they don't want to be named, obviously, because I'm a charlatan and a schmuck fucker, which is a puck schmuck of the nth degree of fucticity. And this can really damage your credibility as far as, uh, well, whatever the fuck that means. Anyway, what you're looking at is very sensitive data that is coming from sources that is very hard to get because you have to speak foreign languages. And you're looking at Greenland ice data like never seen before. And I want to draw your attention to the 2019 data, which is in red. And what it is showing is the runoff that the media has been reporting is going to be epic and causing the, the Greenland ice sheet to melt. As of August 10th, has dropped into multi-decadal norms and is going into record levels. As of today, the runoff has essentially been shut down on the ice sheet because it is building so rapidly. It is breaking records. The net melt, the same thing. It has fallen below multi-decadal averages back to 1981 for the last three weeks. We're seeing record gains not seen before since the Ice Age scare of the 70s. Isn't that insane? The media is not reporting on this. But we are. Because we want you to know the facts. In fact, Cap Allon over at Electroverse picked up on it. And I had no idea. I said, you know what? I bet Cap picked up on this. Because when I saw the data, I was like, that guy's on point. And boom! Just like the knowledge fest that you came here for, Cap Allon picked up on it. Big gains for Greenland Ice Sheet. Northern Hemisphere total snow mass off to a record start. He saw what I saw. He saw them picking up six gigatons today, and he was getting giggy. He was getting totally giggy. Not only that, <clears throat> take a look at the first data point right here. This is unheard of. This is so far ahead of the first data point on average since 1982. We're talking one, two, three, four, five, Shlevil, Shlevazo, five weeks ahead of normal. Total snow mass for the Northern Hemisphere, excluding the mountains, is popping up. We have a data point. Can you imagine after the next seven to ten days of North American snow where this graph is going to go? It's going to be like Santa's, well... It will be a ho, ho, ho. And no one will be reporting on it but us. Well, an Ice Age farmer and probably a DAP 2030 and others. But I digress. Arctic sea ice shrinks to the second lowest mark on record. Now, this is what I've been trying to teach you for the last two years. That there are two ways to obfuscate from the truth. There are two measures of the Arctic. There is Arctic ice volume, which actually denotes the amount of ice in the Arctic. If you take all the ice and you put it in a cubic area and you can measure that volume, you know how much ice is actually there. But the mainstream media and the global warming alarmists report on Arctic ice extent. This is a different phraseology to perpetuate confusion and to make you think that ice is melting. So let's get to that. It is the second smallest ice extent year on record. Sea, sea ice extent was measured at 1.6 million square miles. That's only 811,000 square miles below the average which is not the second lowest extent. In fact, it tied 2007 and 2016. So that would make it like the fifth lowest extent or fourth. But for the second lowest level on record, the data said. So that's very confusing to begin with because they began with, it shrinks to the second lowest mark on record which includes the 20, 2007 and 2016 record, 
plus the 2019 record, which makes it the first, second, third, fourth. Anyway, this is sea ice extent, which, look, if the ice is thinner, it spreads out wider. If the ice is thicker, it, it, it tends to be tighter. So sea ice extent has nothing to do with volume of ice, which no alarmist or mainstream climatologist would ever explain to you. Only someone with integrity like Diamond that went to college and isn't paid by anybody <laughs> to do anything could explain to you. Because I've been watching this closely for half a decade <clears throat> and they consistently use this to confuse you. When ice extent is low, you need to come check the thickness. And the reason is because their ice extent low data, which is now the fifth lowest since 1979. Well, since 1979, they picked a data point with the maximum ice extent in the last 100 years. They just picked the max in the last 100 years and said, we're going to start there and everything else will be less. When, if you looked at the 1974 data, you would see it would be lower than any data point since 1979. If one person with integrity in the mainstream would find that piece of information out and actually report on it, and they would say, <clears throat> did you guys know that in 1974, the ice extent was lower than any of the data points they're claiming are the lowest? Isn't that total bullshit? Isn't it? Total bullshit? And, and when the total snow mass for the Northern Hemisphere comes out a month earlier than the multi-decadal averages going back to 1982, when for the last decade they said there would never be snow, don't you think they're, that's bullshit? A decade ago, there would never be snow. And now, for the first time, we are exceeding the multi-decadal average by month, a month. It's absolutely insane. Greenland is building six gigatons a day just four weeks after they said it was going to melt away. Do you remember that? It's now building ice to historic levels in the fall. And soon the mainstream will be called out for them picking the data point on Arctic ice where they can show a linear decline. Because if anyone just pulls up the data for Arctic ice in 1974, they're going to find it's lower than any of the five lowest ever in history. It's not a mystery. It's called a fraud. And every single night I've been pointing it out for almost 700 fucking days. And here we have the sea ice volume, which is in the gray zone. Now, that article just said it's the second lowest ever, but the volume is in the gray zone, which goes back to 2004. So it's within the average of the last 15 years, the volume, which is greater than the average back in 1974, by the way which was lower than any of this graph. 74 would be down here. And in 1974, you would have been shitting your pants because the world would be about to end. <whistles> you, bet you would have a funeral for the Arctic. KP has been at zero for 18 hours over the last 36, which means volcanoes are being heated. Based on the scientific data, Muons penetrate the subsurface and heat the siliceous magma. Chivalouche blowing to 17,000 after it blew to 23,000 feet yesterday. Right here. So, <clears throat> three days ago we made a prediction that Chivalouche went from 12 to 13 to 15 to 17 and it was increasing. And here it is back at 23,000. Hmm. Not only that, 
We have Reventador erupting to maximum, 16,000. Popo up to its 22,23 max. Sabankaya to 24,000. And Devados de Chilon booming to 13. Chevalouche, another 17 puff recently. And Popo back at 22. Holy who? Sabankaya, 25,000. Hmm. That's amazing how that works. <coughs> Long awaited EPA study says fracking pollutes drinking water. <laughs> Long awaited. Seismic update. Holy sh kicking off San Oh my god, we had it. We had it. It happened. It happened while we're doing the video. Puerto Rico. We've got multiple low pressure systems in this region. And we just had a 6.0 kickoff in Puerto Rico right when I started the video. Let's check out this seismic warning. Tsunami warning center. No tsunami warning. Watch or threat for the downgraded 4.6. In Puerto Rico. So that's good news, but it doesn't mean that the powers that be actually know what they're talking about. So the 4.6 is the aftershock. Let's come to the 6.0. Well, let's check that data because we want to make sure we don't make a grave error. No tsunami warning or threat or advisory. The depth was very shallow, which would be indicative of tsunami threat of a quake of this size, small quakes of that stature. And we have so we have some up uptick in the Caribbean, which Ben Davidson uh, warned about a few days ago due to the blot echo activity in this region. So kudos to him. I'm sure Dutch since met mentioned it as well. I don't know, I don't watch his channel. But uh, Uptick in fracking is disgusting. Solar system approaching the closest position to the galactic core. Energetic region altering magnetic fields of the sun and planets. Someone wanted me to uh, describe this in layman's terms. And all I can say is that our solar system moves through the Milky Way. And every 40 to 60 million years, we go through one of those spiral arms. And there's mass extinction events and a bunch of shit hits us and it's hell. And the dinosaurs go extinct. That was the last time. We're back in it. That's this time. 64 million years ago, the dinosaurs went poo-poo. And we're back in the next spiral arm phase. But we've just entered a void in the galaxy. Which is not good because our magnetosphere on Earth is waning and the void also allows less protection from cosmic radiation. So the entire solar system is moving into a void, which is getting bombarded by cosmic rays, which add electricity to the circuit of the planetary body. Now, if you're a planet that doesn't have an atmosphere, you're going to heat up. You're just going to create friction and start to heat up and shit's going to get hot. It's global warming solar system wide. But if you're on a planet with an atmosphere like Earth, cosmic rays are going to cause clouds to nucleate and the opposite of the greenhouse effect occurs. When clouds form, heat is not trapped. Cold is trapped. Because I don't know if you've ever been to a, an eclipse. When the sun is covered, it gets fucking cold. So I was told. But I digress. So the entire solar system is being in effect, uh, affected by this event. Planets without atmospheres will heat up. Planets with atmospheres will cool down like Earth. It's anyone's guess what happens to Venus because that's a new planet and it's just reaching equilibrium, so to speak. Chemistry expert carbon dioxide can't cause global warming. You know why? Because of the thermodynamics, I think I've said this uh, maybe a hundred times now, 
I got a 4.0 in thermodynamics. There's something called the ocean, which is so fucking gigantic, most people can't wrap their minds around it. I mean, it would take a few days to... Anyway. The ocean, by the way, is also the main controller of carbon dioxide. Outgassing, ingassing, trapping, and releasing. It's part of the carbon cycle, the water cycle. All related. But the oceans are voluminous. They're gigantic. They reach a depth of five or more miles. And they cover the majority of the planet. And, and, and someone... I read a story about this. Now, let's say this. Let's say it is global warming. The whole planet's burning up. And you got these oceans. Let's put 100 gallons of water in the center of a room. And let's turn the thermostat up to 100. Do you know how long it would take to heat up that 100 gallons of water? No said. And that's one of the reasons why during ice ages, the entire Pacific Rim remains tropical. So literally on the coast, it's tropical. But if you just go 20 miles inland, it's ice. It's insane. The Aleutian Islands were tropical during the last glacial period because that was the warmest place basically in the middle of the Pacific there. Blast from the past. Ohio River dried up. It's not you. It's not CO2. There is no increasing droughts. The droughts have ended. But the alarmists still claim that we're all going to be droughted up. There will be droughts. There always are droughts. Australia sucks. They never get water. That's why I don't live there. And, oh, guess what? In the deserts, they get droughts. <clears throat> but natural climate variability also leads to extreme droughts in areas that are usually fertile, like Ohio. Ohio where the Ohio River dried up October 15th in 1908. There's a guy standing in the middle of it. It's the view from the West Virginia side, looking across to Bridgeport. Oh, I can't wait till that happens again. We have the data. Dems grill more than 10,000 top grass-fed steaks. While they lecture Americans about climate change and how you have to eat Soylent Green and cows need fart bags, but we're going to grill these bitches up. Ah! You know, I don't even know how Joe Biden made it this far. He's the dumbest schmuck ever in politics. He's basically like vanilla fluff from the middle of the supermarket aisle. He's like half GMO. And uh, half sugar and no substance. It's all air. Like, how did these people get these positions? They have so much fucking money that they just pay like a bunch of other influential idiots. So he's like, oh yeah, that's a great idea. Joe, you're so nice. You barely touch anyone's tits or ass. You'd be a great governor. Yeah. You're so good with the kids. The way you give them money and... uh and uh, Kit Kats and shit, man, you're you're awesome. People, they can relate to you. So these schmucks grill up thousands, tens of thousands of steaks, hand them out to other leftists that are all like, yeah, global warming, save the planet. And it's like crickets. Where where's Mary Greeley when you need her? Fact check, alarmist kids especially autistic Alzheimer's or whatever in German Nazi propaganda teens or tweens or what do we call this? Is this child pornography? Who knows? <clears throat> but they bring these little children to the climate crisis hearings to re read the script. And I'm sure you've all watched it. It's so embarrassing. Let's break it down. In some of the sentences that that poor girl was meant to read, read, she was basically forced to read this. She was pumped up to pretend to, you know, let's go do this. You ready to do this? Yeah, I'm gonna do it. And then they, and they, you know, it's anyway, predict predictive programming, whatever you call it, MK Ultra. Much we're witnessing the effects of climate change daily, according to Greta. 
with storms, forest fires, floods, and other disasters occurring, according to climate change. Well, these are actually weather events and not climate events, Greta. And they have all been happening since we've had eyes and ears to report on them. I mean, as far back as the first literature. Have you read the Bible? There was some really big stuff that happened then. But anyway... And, and then she goes on to say with increasing frequency and intensity. And if you watch our channel, you know that that's all hoo-ha. There is no increasing wildfires. There is no increasing intensity of tropical storms or hurricanes or winds or any of that. It's all decreasing. It's all been decreasing since 1934, which was the peak of global warming, which is natural climate variability warming, by the way. Increased CO2 levels are greening the planet, in fact. It's the misuse of agricultural land to grow biofuels and other shit that is polluting the actual water and... Anyway. I don't even want to go on with this. But the, the, the bottom line is that this poor Greta Thunberg who is being pimped out by her parents and paid off to the tune of hundreds of thousands of dollars is an exact mimic for the Nazi propaganda back in the 30s. Just Google it. There's lots of memes coming out online where you can make your own decisions. Every single word this child says, she is unable to actually comprehend the information because she has no prior knowledge or scientific backing to support what the adults have told her. This is categorical child abuse. It's almost like molestation in, in a really bizarre way. But I, I feel the pain that this child is going to go through because she is leading a similar life to mine. It's very abusive and very confusing. Now, the climate change protesters shutting down D.C. streets don't even know why they're doing it because they're just as dumb as Greta. The Pitzel Glacier, the Swiss held a funeral there. They're just as dumb as all the other people that don't have a few hours of their time to go research climate science, climatology, and the fraud that is being perpetrated on them by the intergovernmental pattern, <laughs> the intergovernmental panel on wealth redistribution called the IPCC. Agenda 2030 is not about helping you or saving you. It's about extracting your worth, dehumanizing you, and when will you wake up? Did you know that these 100 companies are to blame for 71% of the supposed greenhouse gas emissions? Yeah. 71% of 100 71% of all emissions coming from 100 companies. If the powers that be wanted to actually save the planet, they would just tell these 100 companies to cut all of their greenhouse gases and we would save the planet. They wouldn't need to tax you as a citizen on the earth. They wouldn't need to scare you. It could happen tomorrow. Either the companies comply or they shut down. And guess what? They would all comply because the money would not flow. But this is not being talked about on any CNN or lamestream or MSNBC or Suck My Dick TV. Because they don't care about the truth. 100 companies, 71% of the supposed disastrous gases that are killing you when actually they're just feeding the forests, which have been greening for 30 years. <clears throat> now, this is the paper, the Carbon Majors database that I'm going to share with you. If you want to delve into those 100 companies, you want to stop buying shit from them and stick your foot right up their ass. Do it. But look at this alien, evil, satanic fucking prick. And read the article. 
and you're going to find out why everyone's got cancer, everyone's sick, and everyone's fucking stupid because of this fucking lizard-ass prick. Are you picking it up? Syntropic agriculture. Someone sent me this. This is theft. This prick named Grotch, or whatever the fuck his name is, he can suck it. If you read this paper from Forest Nation, who can also suck it, they're absolutely perpetrating a fraud, which is called permaculture. Syntropic agriculture is another name for permaculture that you robbed and you gave no source. And, and my God, if this was a university, you would be disbarred. You would be thrown out. This entire article doesn't mention permaculture once. It says that this prick in Germany invented permaculture. Well, I could tell you that Holmgren and every other fucking asshole that claims they invented permaculture didn't invent a fucking thing. This has been known about for thousands of years by ancient cultures, and it's why the Brazilian rainforest is even there. It is a planted permaculture forest. So Grotch, you can suck it, Holmgren, and every other asshole profiting from forest gardening can suck it because all they did was they capitalized on nature, which should be free and shared to everyone abundantly. And you shouldn't have to pay for it. Fucking assholes. This is running long. The more you hug your kids the more their brain develops. My mother wasn't even able to be hugged. So do you know how often I was hugged? And my father beat me. Fuck you, dad. I can't believe you're still alive. Please die. Mysterious mineral from Earth's mantle discovered in South Africa diamond. This is amazing. Uh... For some, for some reason, I got a 4.0 in mineralogy. It's because of George Meyer, my professor in graduate school. He was awesome. He was like, he knew about the destroying angel mushroom, and he got me into mycology. I really appreciate that, man. But si scientists unearthed a mineral from a volcanic site in South Africa, and an inclusion within a diamond create, uh, contained this very rare black mineral coming from the mantle. Uh, the mineral was named Goldschmidtite, which is awesome. And it contains some of the craziest elements ever. Well, potassium, which is not so crazy. But cerium. And lanthanum, some of the rarest elements ever, are in abundance in this mineral. The mineral is mostly noibium. Can you believe that? Noibium. It's mostly noibium and potassium, but I, I don't know why they don't give us the chemical formula for it. It's noibium, potassium, lanthanum chloride. Goldschmidtite. God bless. Microsoft president calls for urgent action to tackle the rise of killer robots. So does Rex Bear. Hope you got something out of the video. Times are changing. Winter is coming. It's getting cold. And it will only get worse. If you haven't started learning how to grow, why don't you make a New Year's resolution and start to learn how to grow indoors? Start learning how to wildcraft. Buy some books. Learn about local edibles, wild edibles, herbs, and weeds. Have you considered learning how to hunt? If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, there are hunting courses happening all over. They don't cost much, and they may save your life. Be safe. We love you.